guys, I'm going to show you how to change your front brakes and rotors on your Hummer. This will work for any Hummer H2. Um, I have aftermarket wheels, so the takeoff process will be slightly different. But that's about it. Everything else will be exactly the same. Through the video, I'll tell you what tools you'll need, and I'll show you exactly everything you need to do. You know what type of wheel you have. may have this or not. A cap to cover it. Underneath we will have our lug nuts. I'm going to be using an impact gun. If you're not, you'll have to keep your wheel on the ground first before you jack it up. There's the jack up point, the frame. You have a bunch of space under there to start taking it off. Now I'm going to start taking the wheels off. Always check them. 19 millimeter. on the tire it makes it a lot more comfortable when doing this work. You want to step over here now on this side. Next we'll want to take this off. This gives us more space. We need to take this off to be able to move the caliper all the way up there. Be very careful when you're lifting your caliper so you don't break your holes or stretch it. So it's all loose now. And I'll go ahead and try to get this piece off. Probably need a little flat head. Sometimes they're stuck. This one is. There we go, like that. Now we got all that space. Now we're going to look for a, probably going to be about an 18. That's a three quarters. Yep, so you'll need a 18 millimeter and this takes off your caliper. We're just going to loosen these up first. And if you can show them, it's right here and down there, just so they know where. Alright, when we get those loose, we're going to try to pry on this and that will give us a little bit more space when we're trying to uh, when we're trying to get the pads off. All right, that should be good. Slide pins, always grease these when you take them off. Came off like this, so I'm going to set this as the bottom one, this is the top. They're pretty much the same thing, but some vehicles they are different, so it's good to keep that in habit. Try prying it off this way. Sometimes these can be very difficult to take off. There we go. 
this one wasn't too bad. Try not to bend that hose. Next we're looking at our brake pads. So now we want to look at our new ones. Always make sure you use gold or better. Anything cheaper than that is complete garbage. Here's our new clips. Go ahead and take these off. We can see that this piece is on the bottom. So we'll want to make sure we put the right on, right one on, like that. We'll lay that one here, lay that one down there. So now we're gonna take this whole piece off. And I'm gonna assume it is a uh, 21 millimeter. Yes, it is a 21. And uh, definitely wanna on there really good. I'm going to go get a breaker bar. Alright, I'm back with the breaker bar. Um, I could use the impact and angle this, but just for the people that do not have an impact gun, I'm going to show you guys the manual way of doing it. Alright, so this one's on there really good. I'm gonna turn it on so we have more access. We can definitely tell that this was driven on really hard with an impact. So now I got them loose, I'm just gonna spit them off real quick. This saw, we'll go ahead and take our old rotor off. And this thing feels bent. You can definitely tell there's a bunch of rust under here. So I'll go ahead and clean as much as we can. Doesn't need to be perfect, but you definitely want it to be going on level. Spray a little brick cleaner on there. We'll wipe it down. Make sure to use gloves whenever you use brake cleaner. Try not to inhale anything or use it too much. Alright, here's our uh, New rotor. I'll see this is the right one. Also, going to post a video on the back as well. Looks good. So, first, we're going to place it on backwards. We're going to spray it a little bit and scrub, scrub that uh, covering they put on it so it doesn't rust. The way our brake pads will get better. 
connection. You can also clean it with soap and water, like in the sink. This is probably the quickest way. Now we're down to where our sliding pins go in. There's grease in that, so we're not going to clean that out. If it's very rusty, you will want to do that. So I'm going to clean where the brake pads slide on with a wire brush and due to the sake of time I'm just going to use my drill. You can do it with a hand brush too for like $2 at Harbor Freight. Now that we got it clean, we'll try to get anything else off of it with a little bit of brake cleaner. I'm going to wipe it down. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and mount it. All right. So you'll see your threads are in here. See that curve? goes in like this. Sometimes that can be confusing. And what I do is I hand tighten the top. Then I go down and do the bottom. And then I'll tighten them both firm. Once you do that, then we can go to the breaker bar. We're not going to make it super tight like it was before. We are just going to make sure that it's on there tight. So this is a three foot extension. So if I lift up on 40 pounds, that's 120 pounds, which is plenty. All right, so we've got that tight. Now we're going to go ahead and put these on. You'll notice this wall and this wall, it's different size as well as this. Skinny walls on the outside, thicker walls on the inside. I know we got that on. Go ahead, make sure this metal piece is on the bottom. Slot down in there. Make sure it wiggles decent. You don't want these where they don't move because they'll just start burning. Got that one on. Now we're to our sliding pins. Guys, please make sure you always lubricate these. I'm just using some fancy synthetic caliper grease from O'Reilly's. This bottle cost me about 12 bucks and I've had it for three years. And I work on cars every day, multiple cars. Um, I don't use this every day, but I probably put this on 400 cars already. Just like that. So it's definitely a good investment. Now that we got those ready, we'll set these down. And now we're going to go back to our caliper. What we have to do here is press it in. And you also want to check your hose for any tears. 
this looks old so next time I'm under this vehicle when I have time I am definitely going to change that hose out that's very dangerous and it can collapse and cause this side not even to get brake pressure or it can break and cause all my fluid to leak out which will cause a wreck because my brakes will not function what I'm using here is just giant pliers not many people do it this way but I use it sometimes especially if I forget a tool I always have big pliers with me it can be used on so many different things what I did was I put a pad in the middle so I can go so I can apply equal pressure and you do have to have a lot of hand strength if you do this manually if not you can use a C clamp same way all right now that this is down we're gonna make sure that the hose is not twisted and we're gonna gently put this back on just like that then we're gonna check our little rubber grommets Make sure they're not pulled to the side. We want them to go down in the hole. This one down here too. Slide that down in there. Twist it around a little bit so that grease can go everywhere. Once that's in, a few screws, then we'll go ahead and go up here. Make sure that rubber piece is not pinched or snatched or anything. Go ahead, tighten that in. Once you're to this point, 18 millimeter, like I said earlier. We'll go ahead and use this to put them on, both on firmly. And we'll go ahead and switch over to half inch ratchet. And you don't want these that super tight because all these do is slide back and forth, but you want them on firm enough where they're not gonna back themselves off. All right, so now we're back to the, uh, it's right here. I'm not sure exactly where that bolt went. Oh, here it is. Make sure not, nothing's pinching each other. Go ahead and put that on. Doesn't need to be on that hard at all. If you want, you can clean this up, clean your greasing, I mean your uh, bleeder valve. This one's pretty old, but I'm going to leave it alone for now until I replace that line. And then you're it to putting your, your wheel on. You'll want to torque these to about 95 to 100 foot-pounds. Between 90 and 100 is perfect for each of these. And do it here, then here, you know, back and forth. I use my impact gun. It's in Milwaukee on the first setting. It sets it right between 90 and 100. So I'll go ahead and show you. These big wheels can be very uh, challenging for some people. If you don't have enough strength to lift them up, you can always jack it down perfectly where it just sits on. I just ripped my glove, that's so heavy. Alright, now that we got it on, go ahead and push these down in there all you have to do is push them if you have a wheel like this they are hard you can't turn them by hand they're so down in there and then I'm going to go ahead and get the right size which I believe is 18 can't remember. It might be 19. I'm gonna go ahead and what is it? Or 20. I can't remember. It's been a long day. Maybe it's 21. No. Hola. ¿Cómo estás?
Bien, ¿y ustedes? Está grabando oh. un video. Hey, para YouTube para los breaks de la información So that's pretty much it. Uh, if you don't have an impact gun, you have to do it by hand and try to get a half inch uh, torque if you're really into that, or you can just use a long bar and tighten it pretty hard. Um, hopefully, this video is helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll try to do a video on the back as well in the future.